Do you have a rising 10th grader or a current 10th grader who is passionate about going to a top college or university? If you do, this is a video for you. I'm gonna share with you the top five things you should be doing right now with your 10th grader to get them prepared to be ready for Harvard, Stanford, Yale, Princeton, you name it. Hi, I'm Lindy. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. I'm happy to have you here. Today's video is focused on 10th grade. If you have a 10th grader who is preparing to go to a top college or university or aspires to go to a top college or university, this video is going to talk about the top five tips that you should be doing today with your 10th grader to prepare them to be a competitive applicant for top universities. Tip number one, it's never too early to start practicing for your standardized tests, specifically the PSAT, which they will take junior year. So for 10th grade though, they need to um, either take a PSAT class or get a book if they're better at self-study. Um, it just depends on the kid. My son was definitely better at self-studying and my daughter took a class. So it just depends on what the kid wants to do and how they approach learning and how they approach standardized testing. Either way though, they need to start practicing for the PSAT in 10th grade. So when it rolls around in October of the 11th grade, they are all set to go. The PSAT is a big deal because um, the top 1% of students that take the test junior year can earn a scholarship. So it's a really big deal. Plus it's very prestigious to have on your, applica your college application or when you're in an interview, those sorts of things. So I would highly encourage um, you as parents to work with your kids to understand and lay out a plan for what they're gonna be doing standardized test wise. Some kids take the SAT, some kids take the ACT, some kids take both as a practice to see which one fits them better. I would highly recommend doing that as well. So that's tip number one. Tip number two, keep exploring passions. The kids, again, have to go broad. They have to go deeply on whatever their passion area is. For example, let's say your kid is a STEM kid, like my son was. He took advanced science research from 10th, 11th, and 12th grades. He went all in. It was a whole summer experience every single summer for him where he competed in um, science fairs and did those sorts of things. So he went very broad and went very deep. He did it for three and a half years and it was just a lot invested in that particular activity. Let's say your child is um, into drama or singing or dancing. They need to go all in on those things. If they're passionate about it, they need to do those over multiple years, do those activities and try to reach the highest level in those activities. So win the top award if they can do it. Those are the kinds of things that stand out. So number two is follow passion. Keep following it. Number three, edit the high school plan in terms of the classes that they are gonna take. When I talked about the, in my last video, I talked about being the parent of a ninth grader, setting the plan in terms of academically, what will they take, ninth grade, 10th grade, 11th grade, and 12th grade. Well, now that you're in 10th grade, you need to look back and say, okay, ninth grade, this is what we took, this is how it went. Um, if things are looking good, GPA is high, then you're on the right path, you need to keep going forward. Um, look at AP classes, look at um, extra classes to take over the summer. These are the kinds of things that will drive the child forward and make them stand out when it's time to do their applications for these top universities and colleges. Academics will come first, so they need to be pretty much A's, some B's there, here and there, but like really hard on the academic grind is, is necessary to set themselves apart. I mean, it's really necessary as a ticket to entry in a lot of these schools, pretty much, that you have to have a very, very strong GPA, but then you also have to have those passionate activities layered on top of that. So they need to be focused on academics. Tip number four, they should be making a preliminary college list. It's gonna change, but they should at least have their top, let's say five or 10 schools on a list that they can start researching because it takes time to research. Some of them you may be able to visit, some of them you may not be able to visit. There's online tours that you can go on, those sorts of things. So they need to kind of get serious about what exactly is it that they're looking for, a big college, a small college, 
you know, Midwest, West Coast, East Coast, that sort of level of detail needs to be happening in sophomore year. And last but not least, over the summer, they need to be stepping their game up a little bit more. They need to be getting a job for sure. They can take some classes. They should do something in their passion area um, to keep furthering, furthering their experience there. They can volunteer. Um, and I would say spend a lot of time studying for the PSAT in any subject matter tests that they're planning on taking. Going into um, the sophomore year, going into junior year is an important time for the kids to get their heads around the fact that college is not that far off and they need to be laying the bricks to get themselves prepared to have a very strong application. So those are my top five tips for a sophomore to participate in and to get serious about. I'll see you in my next video.